Sunny spread her warm golden wings and Starflight fitted his own wings around hers for a hug. It always felt like exactly where he should be, even if just for a moment. I'm so glad you're all right, she said, stepping back and examining him for injuries. I was checking on webs and then this Skywing came in, all of, of all things, and I was showing the healers how to get the cactus milk into his wound when someone said two Nightwings brought him in and I knew it must be you. You know, I wanted to go through and find you, but Glory said no. She wrinkled her snout at the new queen. Glory is right. It's too dangerous there, Starflight said. Oh, please. Where have we been, lady, that isn't dangerous? Sunny said. All the more reason we should go rescue you. Although I wasn't really worried, because of course you had to be fine so we could fulfill the prophecy, right? And look, you rescued yourself, which is so impressive. Starflight guessed that the grin on his own face was probably a little goofy, but he couldn't seem to squelch it. And you are? Fate Speaker interjected, clearing her throat and saddling so close to Starflight that she bumped one of his wings. I'm Sunny, said the little sandwing. She tilted her head at Fate Speaker. Wow, your silver scales are so cool! That one looks like a bracelet, like you were born with your own treasure! Fate Speaker's wings relaxed a little. She held out her talons to peer at the anklet of Starbright scales. I never thought of it like that. I was about to say your scales are a great color. All the sand wings I've met are sort of pale and dusty looking. I know, I'm weird, Sunny said agreeably. You're the ultimate Nightwing, right? Glory said Starflight had lots of nice things to say about you. Fate Speaker gave Starflight a delighted look that made him unaccountably nervous. What was it like growing up in the Talents of Peace camp? So bizarre. Fate Speaker said, folding her wings and leaning towards Sunny. We were always moving so no one could find us. And everyone talked about peace, but it seemed like all we were doing was avoiding soldiers and waiting for the prophecy to come true. But it must have been amazing to live with so many dragons from different tribes, Sunny said, her eyes shining. You'd get to see what really makes them different, and the ways they're all the same too. Oh, I was thinking about that, Fate Speaker said. I was the only Nightwing, so I was always trying to figure out which other tribe I was most like. But you couldn't find something in common with all of them, Sunny guessed. Exactly. All right, Glory interrupted. As strangely adorable as you two are, I need you to either go away and discover your twin souls somewhere else, or focus on battle planning with me. Battle planning, Fate Speaker and Sunny said simultaneously. Glory gave Starflight an odd, somewhat amused look, and he shifted uncomfortably, though he wasn't sure why. He liked that Fate Speaker and Sunny liked each other, but it also made him weirdly uneasy. Luckily, at that moment, Mangrove arrived with the elegant older dragon Starflight had seen in Kinkajou's dream. Let's take this meeting to the tunnel, Glory said. I need tsunamis and clay's input too. She gathered her wings and soared off the balcony into the trees. Fate Speaker and Sunny went next, talking to each other as they flew. Starflight followed, trying to keep his mind on the impending attack. Only a few minutes of sunshine and fresh air, and he was already finding it hard to believe what he had gone through on the Nightwing Island, or that an army of angry dragons was preparing to destroy all of this before the next sunrise. Once they were all gathered, within sight of the tunnel but out of hearing distance to be safe, Glory had Starflight explain everything he had heard in the council chamber. So at least some of them are afraid of us, she said when he had finished. I'd say most of them, Starflight said. I mean, I think that's the whole reason they've been kidnapping Rainwings and studying them, and why they haven't attacked before. They're terrified of your venom. Glory showed her teeth and hissed. They should be. Yours, maybe, Tsunami said. But the rest of these dragons, I really can't guarantee that any of them will use it on another dragon, even in a life or death situation. They've been told their whole lives to never, ever use it as a weapon. I've done my best, but you tried changing an entire tribal philosophy of life in three days. I know, Glory said, starting to pace. Which I'm not even sure we should, Sunny interjected. I like their philosophy. I could do it. Grandeur said. Attack! 
like another dragon with my venom. I mean, for the sake of my tribe. But I agree that the others would have trouble. She glanced at Mangrove. I'd try, he said. For Orchid. She's really still alive? He asked Starflight. I'm waiting for ya, Fate Speaker said. Starflight told her you were looking for her, and she said she'd survive until you came. A faint wave of pink rippled across Mangrove scales. I'm worried about attacking first, Clay said. We'd have to come out the other end one at a time. If they're smart, they'll be waiting, and then they could pick us off one by one. But if we wait here and let them attack, we could do that to them instead. We'd be in a stronger position. I don't want them in my rainforest, Glory snapped. If they think they're losing, they'll set the whole place on fire just to be horrible. Besides, we have to go there to rescue the Rain Wings. Even if we drive back their attack, we'd still have to go through at some point, and we'll have wasted resources on our defense. No, we go to them first. We just have to find a way to get everyone past the guards at the entrance. I have an idea, Sunny said. Changing your skills will help, Tsunami said at the same time. They won't see the Rain Wings coming along the tunnel if they're all camouflaged. Then maybe we burst out and start attacking and hope we surprise them. Doubtful, Starflight said. Once Moroseer figures out I went through, he'll be on high alert at the tunnel opening. I think it's a good idea, Sunny said. The one I have, I mean. We need to choose the bravest Rain Wings for the first wave, Glory said. Tsunami, I want you to make a list for me based on what you've noticed during training. Tsunami snorted. A brave list might be asking a lot. You can have a less sleepy than the others list. One does not speak to a queen that way of her citizens, Glory said with a mock haughtiness, then lapsed back into her regular voice. Anyway, I think the Rain Wings will surprise you. I've been meeting them with them all, one by one, as fast as I can, and they're a lot more complicated than they seem. Doesn't anyone want to hear my idea? Sunny asked. I do, said Starflight, but Glory was already speaking to Mangrove. We have to make sure that we pair up rel related Rain Wings with each, each squadron, so there's always someone to counteract the Venom if there's an accident. I know Sunny's been taking notes on that, so make sure we use her char when we form the squadrons. With a stab of jealousy, Starflight saw Sunny lean toward Clay and whisper in his ear. Sometimes, it seemed to him as though Sunny and Clay were always together, like the Mudwing was the one she could trust more than any other dragon. He wished he could be that for her instead. But he wasn't anything like Clay. And the truth was, if he had to choose someone to trust with his life, he'd put Clay over himself as well. I don't know how to prepare them to fight Nightwing fire, Tsunami said a little hopelessly. Most of these dragons have never even seen fire. They'll probably think it's shiny and pretty and try to touch it. Glory coiled her tail and stared at the sky through the trees. Starflight guessed from her expression that she was thinking about how Rain Wings were going to die. There was no way to avoid it. Becoming queen of an entire tribe all of a sudden was hard enough. But leading dragons into battle, especially woefully underprepared dragons, was something none of the dragonettes knew anything about or even wanted to do. We wanted to stop the war, not start a whole new one. Do the Rain Wings have any chance against the armor-clad, fiercely desperate, violently unhappy Nightwings? Are we all going to die today? We're only Dragonettes. We shouldn't be leading anyone to their deaths. <sighs> but this is happening no matter what we do. We have no choice now. I tried to draw a map of what I could remember of the island, Glory said to Starflight. I want you to fill in as many details as you can. I guess we should have several dragons go straight to the prison caves and try to free the trapped rain wings. Queen Splendor is inside the fortress, Starflight said. In the same dungeon as Deathbringer. Oh, Glory said, and several colors shifted across her scales at once. So another wing should go in there. Maybe Tsunami can lead that group. Sleeping darts! Clay suddenly yelled, making everyone jump. Glory stared at him. What? Those sleeping darts the Rain Wings used to knock us out when we got, first got to the rainforest, Clay said. He nudged Sunny forward. Sunny says the healers have hundreds of them. The Rain Wings use them all the time. They play this game where they try to sneak up on each other before getting shot. 
That's true, Mangrove said, lashing his tail. And we take turns patrolling so we can shoot strange dragons who come into the forest like you five, which is even more fun. Every rainwing already has a blowgun, Sunny said. Arm them all with as many sleeping darts as they can carry and use those instead of fighting. That's it. Gl Glory flared her wings, turning dark purple with lightning bolts of excited gold all along her scales. That's exactly how rain wings should fight. It was Sunny's idea, Clay said, nodding down at the sand wing. Maybe we can do this without casualties, Glory said animatedly. Clay and Sunny, you're in charge of a arming all the rain wings. Get all the sleeping darts you can find. Mangrove, Grandeur, it's time to tell the village. Everyone who's willing to fight, meet by the stream here in one hour. We're doing this before nightfall. She turned to Starflight as the others flew off. Let's review the map. Tell me everything you know. Tsunami unrolled a giant leaf with the sketchy map of the Nightwing Island marked out on it in some kind of dark fruit ink. War is coming. There's no time to be scared, Starflight told himself as he leaned over the map. You can't be the most cowardly dragon on Pyrea right now. Remember, you've read all the history scores you can find about famous battles. Now use that knowledge. It's time to prove that you really do belong in this prophecy. <laughs>